Good morning, everybody, or whatever time it is for you. We're going to return back to this beautiful book. We're outside in nature. Uh, it's called, in English, it's translated to Abandonment to Divine Providence. It's by Jean-Pierre de Cassade, and it was translated from the 1700s. It's a beautiful day. The ocean, I'll show you where the ocean is. I don't have the dog with me today, because, um, well, there's a little mix up, but that's okay. The ocean's right there. So welcome. I'll just say it like, you know, I welcome all people of all faiths. And even if you don't have a faith or, I mean, you have a faith in something, that's for sure. Uh, I was listening to Mere Christianity yesterday and C.S. Lewis was saying, I left atheism and had a more liberal view. <laughs> Because he was saying how atheism was limited, um, but he describes that really well. It's not making fun of anyone. It's just, but um, nevertheless, I do know some atheists that, oh, people that call themselves atheists, but still know how to surrender themselves in some way. You know, they're poets and musicians, and they don't realize you. You, I mean, inspiration is in spirit, Asian. You know but we want the Holy Spirit to fill us and give us all that's good and all that's peaceful and all that's truly loving, not transactional. All right, so let me set this down on, I finally got a tripod. If, if you guys have been with me from the, the beginning, no, I just set it on a rock or wherever I was. I was just like, all right. I really like the phrase, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And um, that thing was coming to me today it was just, I think Marcus Aurelius said it was just, I mean, other people have just, I'm sure it's in the scriptures as well. Everything that comes to you, accept it as it's, as if it was from God's own hand. Oh, I brought a headphone too, so that I can move this. All right, let's just begin. A, a, a kind of mic, but anyway, we'll see. <sighs> oh yeah, what I was saying is like, we can use this time to just let go of everything. That's a permission to let go of everything. And it's like a good way to pass our time. I'm always looking at how can I, how can I have some downtime that's honoring, honoring to God, you know? Because there's so many things in this world that can distract us and pull us into, you know, God knows what. So, God, we just give this time to you. Thank you for nature. Thank you for the sun shining on us. Thank you for every single person that's here. Thank you for the wind. We give you all our requests, God. And we leave them at the foot of the cross knowing you can take care of all of them, Lord. Bring peace and resolution and defend us, Lord, in every situation. Correct us when we're off path. Bring us back to perfect love. Help us love all people. Help us forgive all people. Help us receive, Lord, your forgiveness. Thank you for your forgiveness. We present all of this thanking you for, for, for blessing us with your presence, with your love, with your kindness, with your mercy, with your son, Jesus Christ. We pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen. I'm kidding in my heart. If we would just smile more, <laughs> things would go better. <laughs> Now I'm getting that song, smile when your heart is aching, or I don't even know how that song goes. 
anyway, but no matter what, you know, the world will keep trying to pull us down. We get to be eagles. I'm, I'm unraveling this for us. Um, so don't fight on the ground where the snakes are. Oh, I heard the most un amazing thing, uh, amazing thing, not unamazing, amazing thing. And I was reflecting on it in my meditation on the way up here, just uh, a sermon on this past Sunday uh, by a certain pastor. I don't like telling where I am. So sometimes I don't name people's names, but I always want to give them credit. So, um, but this pastor, and if you know me, then, then you know which pastor I'm talking about. All right, this better be working. Um, he said that the word Goliath, and no, you can look this up as well. The word Goliath means one who wants to oppress and dominate. And, you know, I can't say some of the other words because I don't want to get, you know, um, my videos flagged for silly stuff that I'm not even talking about. I'm talking about these deep psychological concepts and spiritual concepts. And so when David took out Goliath, he was taking out that element in his life that kept trying to dominate him and keep him pulled down. Like the snake will try to get you to fight on the ground. And all you have to do is keep flying high. It's that, it's that same indomitable spirit, right? That um, God gives us. Okay. This looks like it's folded down. Okay, here we are. We're on a chapter, yeah, I'll do it a little bit longer. I sometimes do this to tell people, like, if you don't want to hear some of the preamble, then you can just fast forward to this. Um, it says, love all in all to the self-abandoned. Chapter IX, which is nine, in book, I think we're in book three, if you want to know. Um, I left the PDF. I forgot. <laughs> the sun's shining in my eyes, but that's okay. Um, love holds the place of all things to souls who walk in the way of abandonment. So love holds the place. Um, wow, wow. Yesterday, I just released This Must Be The Place. All right. And I made it a few weeks ago because um, I have some videos like built up already. But And it's talking about this. This must be the place, this home that we have inside of God. Yet you make your home inside of me. There's, there's a West King song called Home Inside of Me. I love that song. Um, I met him when I was a child. Uh, of course, I met. Anyway. Anyway, so um, I was always surrounded by musicians and stuff. Always. It's so strange now looking back at it. So, love capital L-O-V-E, holds the place, and look how they put it in capitals. So I don't know how it's written in the French, but of all things, to souls who walk in the way of abandonment. So place and all things and souls is capitalized, and way of abandonment, way and abandonment are capitalized. So God, while he despoils a soul who wholly abandons herself to him, gives her something which takes the place of all things, of light, of strength, of life, of wisdom. This gift is his love. Divine love is like a supernatural instinct in these souls. Everything in nature has that which is suited to its kind. Each flower has its pe peculiar charm, each animal its instinct, and each creature its perfection, you know, like a porcupine gets to protect itself with the porcupine, you know, the, the um, spiky, whatever they're called. 
coming out of its body. And the lion is fast and the leopard is fast and the cheetah. And as someone was saying, an ant can carry 500 times its strength. I think that was the financial advisor that talked to us. <laughs> Everything in nature has that which is suited to its kind. Each flower. Hold on. Oh, I have a flower on my shirt today. Look. The best time for new beginnings is now. All right, so that's a message for someone because I was like, why am I wearing this sweatshirt today? And I think it says the same on the back. Something about roses. I saw so many creatures on the way up here. I don't remember what lives here. I haven't seen it. I know something lives here because the little, the reeds, watch, look, the tall reeds over there keep moving, not when the wind is moving. Something always comes over him, looks at me when I'm, when I'm at this place, this location. All right. Um, everything in nature has that which is suited to its kind. Each flower has its peculiar charm, each animal, its instinct, and each creature, its perfection. And so it is in the different states of grace. You know, um, we have different seasons in our life that God takes us through. Like, like Joseph was sold into slavery for a while. And then he went from what they call the pit to the palace, you know, the prison. He was wrongfully imprisoned. <laughs> Some of us may feel like that in our lives when God allows the things in this world to go against us and um, purifies us in that process and detaches us from trying to get our worth from any of those lesser things. <laughs> and then he raised him to be second to the Pharaoh, right? Advisor of the king of all the land. No one else would have guessed that, but this is, this is how God operates. So just keep trusting God and... and I read that verse this morning. It's in Philippians, maybe four. I wrote it out, but I forgot where in Philippians. But it says, Do not fret or worry about anything, but if with all your cares, present your requests. <laughs> it's like, um, keep presenting your requests. It's kind of like in writing, like formal requests, sort of like that to God with thanks um, by prayer petition that's the word by in the word petition prayer petition with thanksgiving present your request to God prayer petition and thanksgiving do not I learned it a different way do not be anxious about anything but with everything by prayer petition um, and thanksgiving present your request to God and he shall Oh, I can't believe I can't remember. The rest of it's like he shall fill you with this peace, this, uh, you know, peace like the world cannot give us. It's like that same idea as before. Jesus was saying, I give you this peace that's not like the world gives you. And his peace shall, oh, guard your mind. It will guard you. His peace will guard you. Um, and I looked up last week or a few days ago, the word for guard in Hebrew because it was in one of the Psalms, like Psalm 91 maybe, but it's like bulwarks when the wings cover you. Um, and I looked up this castle, like it had the most bulwarks ever or something. It's like a guard wall and a guard wall. God will guard us in his own way. So we don't have to keep doing it in our old programmed way. Anyway, I won't make this a teaching video. I'm just, let's read. I don't plan to. That's what the teaching videos are for. Uh, okay, so. Each has its special grace, and this is a recompense to everyone whose goodwill brings him in harmony with the state in which providence has placed him. A soul becomes subject to the divine action. 
the moment a good will is formed in her heart. <laughs> I watched that. That was the movie. It was good will hunting. You're hunting for this good will. His name was Will Hunting, I think, but this is all of all of the scriptures are talking about and all of what Plato was talking about and Socrates and Aristotle and uh, even Marcus Aurelius to a degree. But he he didn't know Christ. He was about he was a little he was after Christ, but those others were before. Anyway, Christ showed the goodwill. Um, peace on earth and goodwill towards men. That's in, I know that's in the hymn, the Christmas hymn, but it's also in Luke when the angels are over the shepherds and stuff. They say something like that. This is God created a way for us to have a goodwill. To, um, C.S. Lewis says this world, he says Christians believe that this world was good and it has gone bad, but it still retains the memory of what it ought to be and what it was. And that's all of this. That's all of my videos are talking about that. If you want as well, there's 60 videos and, and, and I'm not trying to do like shameless plug. <laughs> um, I just was remembering on the way up here to mention it. It was put in my heart to mention it that I have 60 one-hour videos on mysticism, studying the nature and development of spiritual consciousness. If you really want to understand what all of this is, uh, this will show you. This we're doing. We're giving ourselves to God in these. But those are as well. It's Evelyn Underhill who inspired C.S. Lewis. She was a predecessor to him. She wrote the book in 1911 or so. And I know she knows Jean-Pierre de Cassade. She was aware of him, right? He came in the 1700s. And I, I, think, I think she quoted him in that book in our readings. I don't know. There were 60 hours. It's hard to remember all of them. All right. A soul becomes subject to the divine action the moment a good will is formed in her heart. This action influences her according to the degree of her self-abandonment. The art of self-abandonment is simply the art of loving. Divine love grants all things to the soul who refuses him nothing, who gives, you know, we give all of ourselves to God and then God makes us into truly loving creatures, people, spirit, soul beings. And as God's love inspires the desires of a soul who lives for him, he can never refuse them. Therefore, cannot love, cannot love desire what it pleases? It's asking, cannot, you know, when we give ourselves completely to God, then it's like our love is just awakened and, and we see which direction to go at some times when we're like that. Or all times, I don't know, we'll see. The divine action only considers the goodwill of a soul, the capacity or incapacity of the other faculties, neither attract nor repel it. If it find a soul good, pure, upright, simple, submissive, it is all it requires. It takes possession of the soul and of all her faculties and so disposes all things for her good that she finds means of sanctification in everything. That which would give death to others should it enter this soul will be harmless, for the antidote of her good will will arrest the effect of the poison. If she stray to the brink of the abyss, the divine action will withhold her from its depths. Or if she fall, it will rescue her. And indeed, the faults of these souls are but faults of frailty and little perceptible. God's love knows how to turn them to her advantage. and by secret and ineffable ways teaches her what she should say and do according to the circumstances in which she's placed. I don't mind where you go if you wanted to go this way. These bikers came. I'm not blocking their path. I don't mind. It just adds color and texture to our video. Sorry if I yelled in this. You know, if there's bikes in the 
in the background, the foreground. The sky is so amazing today. Doesn't it look like a Van Gogh painting? Such souls receive, as it were, rays of divine intelligence. Intellectus bonus omnibus facetibus cum. So that's the Latin again. So again, if we have any Latin readers, if, if it's not put in here in English, feel free to write it in the comments for us while you're listening. If you're not driving. For this divine intelligence accompanies them in all of their wanderings and rescues them from the snares into which their simplicity leads them. Have they committed themselves to some mistaken measure? Providence disposes a happy event which releases them. Vainly are intrigues multiplied against them. So people have intrigues and, you know, try to throw things at them spiritually or physically and it's all in vain because we have a team of warring and ministering angels that that protect us when you yield yourself fully to god you are god's you're his possession he already died and paid for paid for your redemption and so when you accept that and ask god to fill you with the holy spirit you're his so so the more you give yourself fully to him it's like he's he you know he's my boss he pays me whatever he wants to pay me (laughs) so if ever i complain that's the wrong place for me to be vainly are intrigues multiplied against them providence overcomes all the efforts of their enemies and so confounds and bewilders them that they fall into their own snares Hi. Hi. Um, a group of hikers is going past. Uh, do they seek to surprise the soul? <laughs> like, do they seek to surprise the one who created all of this world? Right? How? How can they do that? They can't. And that's our soul is submitted to to, to the Creator, the one that comes before all things. Right. So. Um, we have a prayer that we pray like every night, my mom and I. Um, it's in the prayer book, the Com- Book of Common Prayer, 1928 Anglican Book of Common Prayer. But I'm sure it's in the Catholic. There's some in the Catholic and the Orthodox. And I know that Jewish people have these kinds of prayers too. But this one says, well, because all of the Psalms are prayers. So it's like a Psalm. It all, well, often they are taken from, from the Psalms. But it says, Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great, mer- great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I memorize that for very, you know, when difficult times arise, when it looks difficult with your outer eyes. Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord. And by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. The, whatever the night is, you know, it looks like black and dark around you. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Not because of our merits or anything, but because for the love of Jesus Christ, who redeemed us, who lives in us, defend us. Right? Do they seek to surprise the soul? Providence, by means of some apparently unimportant action, which she unconsciously performs, rescues her from the embarrassments into which she has been led by her own uprightness and the malice of her enemies. Wow. Wow. So keep following the, the, you know, the leadings. I plan to do that. Hopefully today is the day I get to teach this lesson. The leadings, it's like a dance. I was skating the other day and this guy asked me to do couple skating. And I said, of course, he was teaching me. He's an older gentleman, right? And it was like, while I'm on wheels, it's so much easier than even dancing to let the person lead you. Because I'm on wheels on the roller skate and he just... He's just like, this is just an invitation. You don't have to go this way. When I nudge this way, I'm inviting you to follow this direction. And God was speaking to me because I'd just been praying before that. I pray and skate often. And it was like, 
the Holy Spirit was showing, this is how I lead you. You don't have to go. We never have to go. That's why God gave us free will. But when you're on skates, it's so easy too. And this, when you yield your whole soul to God, it's like you're on skates. And so he just nudges you to go this one direction and all this beautiful stuff unfolds and seeming like things that don't seem like they matter. And then like seven years later, you'll be like, oh, that's so weird that I ran into that person that day that God was nudging me, like putting it into my heart to go to this place today, let's say, or whatever. Like someone that just passed on the trail sees me and is like, oh, I saw you that one day when you were recording that. You know what I mean? That I've never seen before. And um, it happens to that that one person is a lawyer or something or whatever. Or, um, you know, it's, it's, it's what's coming to my mind is a circus master. <laughs> you know, not to harm any animals, but, you know. And um, I don't know, you know, you need, you, you also have a friend who is in need of a circus and you're like, oh, I met that person. Hold on, let me get the number. And it just happens because God placed you in that place to, to be the divine helper. Anyway, I, I encourage you to listen, listen to God and ask for discernment. Oh, um, the exquisite wisdom of this goodwill, what prudence in its simplicity, what ingenuity in its innocence, what frankness in its mysteries, what mystery in its candor. Behold the young Tobias. Um, this is an apocryphal book. It's worth reading. Tobit, I think. But he's called Tobias here. And um, he is a mere youth, but Raphael, Rafa means healing in Hebrew. That's the word for healing. And I was meditating on the verse yesterday, Psalm 103, 3, but it says, he forgives all your iniquities, all your lack of love, and heals all your infirmity, infirmities, infirmities, all your illnesses. He heals every illness. And the word for heals is Rafa. Rafa in Hebrew, but Raphael, El is like short for Elohim, for God, for the Almighty God. I think Elohim is Almighty God. We're taking a class on the names of God. But, um, okay, he is a mere youth, but Raphael, the healer of God, the healing angel of God. This is like an archangel. And I heard also a class of angels, but that's, that's more beyond my pay grade. So anyway, um, but ask God, I mean, it's not anything, don't go off into the new age or anything like that because it will take you off on, um, off, off roading where you don't need to go. But you know, you have to ask God and, and find that out yourself, I guess. I, but I warn not to do it and the Bible warns not to, but any type of quick fix that makes you feel inflated in your egotism, your spiritual egotism, well, beware. All right, so behold the young Tobias. He is a mere youth, but Raphael walks at his side. And with such a guide, he walks in safety. He feels no want. Nothing affrights him. Even the monsters he encounters furnish him, with, furnish him food and healing. The very creature which springs to devour him becomes his nourishment. His own, he is only occupied with the nuptials and festivities. So he was to marry this woman who was like, I can't remember if her, all of her fiancés died or her, who she got married to. And they were really concerned that to Tobias would die as well, but he wasn't concerned because God kept leading him through how to not. It looked like if you have to translate it, like there was a curse on her bloodline and, and he protected her, right? Like a good man ought and, and cover her in prayer and yielded to God. It took the curses off her bloodline and it didn't affect him. And they got to be married and it was beautiful. It's a beautiful love story. I, once I read it, I sent it to someone who was just getting married. And um, anyway, it's the book of Tobit. If you look it up online, it was... It might have been quoted in the New Testament. I'm not sure. You know, anyway. Even the monsters. Okay, so he is occupied 
is only occupied with the nuptials. And of course, spiritually, that's we are the bride of Christ and he is our bridegroom. And that's the nuptials for us to focus on. You know, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well. And so that's what happened in this man's life. This is a real story. For such is his present duty in the order of providence, not that he is without other cares, but they are abandoned to that divine intelligence charged to assist him in all things. And the result of his affairs is better than he could have made it. For everything succeeds and is crowned with prosperity. In that same Psalm, Psalm 103, it says, I will crown you. And the word is encompass in Hebrew. And it's also someone who puts a crown on your head, like Solomon's mom put the crown, I mean, Bathsheba put the crown on Solomon. I will crown you with my loving kindness. That's how the verse is. Chesed in Hebrew. I will crown you. Jesus was crowned with the crown of thorns when they tried to attack him but and and crucify him and he was he he did physically they killed his outer body but he went to Hades and set the captives free and overcome overcame sin and death for us Jesus said that do not fear those who can kill the body but they cannot kill the soul. He was crowned with righteousness and crowned and came back to bring us and will have many crowns. It says that in the book of Revelation. We're, we're a nation of kings and priests. And a king rules, rules with kindness and generosity and um, integrity though you still you rule your own passions God through the help of divine love through the energy of God it's called synergy it's in Romans 8 works together for those um, for God works all things together for those who love him who are called according to his purpose I think that's where that is I, anyway I was writing it yesterday Your, your action mixed with God's action. And God is the one giving you the ability to do all this, just like he gives us the ability to breathe right now. Ah, there's that U2 song. I want to feel sunlight on my face. I see the dust cloud disappear. Without a trace. Hmm. That's where the streets have no name. I think I did a teaching on it. God definitely did a teaching on it in me, that's for sure. Um, so, okay, crowned with... Pro okay, so it's better than he could have made it, to, than Tobias could have made it, for everything succeeds... And is crowned with prosperity. That's Psalm 118. Today, we were reading that this morning in morning prayer. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That's what this prosperity is talking about. Crowned with prosperity, yet the mother bitterly grieves while the father is full of faith. But the child so surly lamented joyfully returns to become the happiness of his family, right? So he's joined into this family and he, they're so happy. Then for those soul, souls who wholly abandon themselves to it, divine love is the source of all good. And earnest desire is all that is necessary to obtain this inestimable blessing. Oh, wow. That's the verse. I will reward those who, dil God will reward those who diligently seek him. That's, you know, when you seek after God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your will. That's the first commandment. Love God with all of this. Right? And so it's saying here, 
Then for those souls who wholly abandon themselves to it, divine love is the source of all good, and an earnest desire is all that is necessary to obtain this inestimable, inestimable blessing. Yes, dear souls, God asks but your heart. If you seek, you will find this treasure, this kingdom where God alone reigns, right? Not your passions, not your flesh, not your programming and your fear from childhood and the bad cur the curses that people put over you by their actions that you internalize where you have this insecure attachment. You don't have to worry about all of that stuff. I'll teach it sometimes, but it's just like you just keep going to God and he gives you a secure attachment. And then you're like, oh, that's what they're all talking about. You can just go to God and he will develop this in you. He will. He does. You know, you can you have all these stratagems to try to do it your own way. And I'm not putting those down. God will lead people in some of those. But if your heart be wholly devoted to God within it, you will find the treasure, the kingdom itself, which is the object of your desires. The moment we desire God and his will, that moment we enjoy them. And our enjoyment corresponds to the ardor of our desires. The earnest desire to love God is loving him. Because we love him, we desire to be the instruments of his action. You know, just be a, make me a vessel. When it says, like, um, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. You, it's like the word became flesh. Christ became, Christ was the word, the logos. He became flesh and dwelt among us. As you let the holy scriptures and all of this the divine will of God just permeate through you. I just did a one minute video of this. I had this vision. It was, I was being distracted. So it was ho so hard to describe in one minute, but it's just, you become like light. You do like God is this ray of light and you become this. And that's all you're declaring by just being the word of God in this place, the will of God in this place, the love of God in this place. That's all you are anymore. And you find that you know, your personality may have died and all your old desires and stuff may have died, but you haven't. Your real essence, the God, your God name in Revelation 2.17, he will give you your name on a white stone that only you and he know. Your soul name. Hmm. Because we love him, We desire to be the instruments of his action, that his love may freely operate in us and through us, that we stop polluting this world by toxicity and, you know, greedy and greediness and, you know, but just God help us to be just, help us to stand up for what is right and what is true. Make us an instrument of your peace. Where there's darkness, let me be light, you know prayer attributed to St. Francis. Where there is hurt, let me be your healing. Right? Make of me your hands and feet. I want to be to the people around me. Be what you want to be to the people around me. If you look up a mystic way to heal, um, under my YouTube channel or with my name. There's a, there's a whole hour that's so good. I'm always putting it, tying it with teachings that I put because I really liked that one. I think I put hashtag ST... Francis, F-R-A-N-C-I-S, so we could find it. Because we love him, we desire to be the instruments of his action, that his love may freely operate in us and through us. The work of the divine action is not in proportion to the capacity of a simple, holy soul, but to her purity of intention. Nor does it correspond to the means she adopts, the projects she forms, the counsel she follows. The soul may err in all these and this is, this not rarely happens. <laughs> oh gosh, God help us all. But with a good will and pure intentions, she can never be misled. When God sees this good disposition, he overlooks all the rest and accepts as done what the soul would assuredly do if circumstances seconded her good will.
Therefore, goodwill has nothing to fear. If it falter, it can but fall under that all-powerful hand which guides and sustains it in all its wanderings. It is this divine hand which draws it toward the goal when it has wandered therefrom, which restores it to the path whence its feet have strayed. It is the soul's refuge in the difficulties into which the efforts of her blind faculties lead her, and the soul learns to despise these efforts to wholly abandon herself to the infallible guidance of this divine hand with a capital H, right? Even the errors of these good souls lead them to self-abandonment and never will a good will find itself unaided for it is a dogma of faith that all things work the good of such souls. So it is, it's a dogma of faith. It's a truth, it's a reality, just like gravity, probably more than gravity, right? Um, and St. Paul was just writing it, the Holy Spirit inspired him to write it, that all things do work for good for those who are called, to, for the called, it says for the called, according to his good purposes, called according to his purpose. When you yield yourself to the purposes of God, I shall not fail. He gave me a bunch of songs to that effect. Like, you know, holding out for a hero is coming to mind. And he's got to be strong. And he's got to be fresh for the fight. <laughs> I need a hero. We are that. We are that in God. Because God is the hero and we're just instruments of that. Chapter 10. The faithful soul finds in submission to the will of God, more force and strength than the proudest of those who resist him. Of those who, okay, so I was only bringing up that movie, Goodwill Hunting, Goodwill Hunting, because um, I had seen it five times when it came out in the movie theater, and that's how I met Elliot, is he hadn't got any, I don't even know if he got the, the Oscar nomination yet, maybe, I don't know. I met him before he got famous. Um, but then later on, soon after that, he went to the Oscars. But he, he had like five songs in that movie. So I was like, that movie was very connected to me in all these weird, mysterious ways. Um, I met Minnie Driver one time at, anyway, I won't go into that. But I wish her well. It was a weird time. Anyway, um, and God rest Elliot's soul. Chapter 10. The faithful soul finds in submission to the will of God more force, with a capital F, and strength than the proudest of those who resist him. Resist him. And so other people think by resisting God, they're go it seems like, like, let's say, by holding on to our anger, we're going to be stronger and have more force because I can force all this because I'm so angry at this person. But when you just surrender to God, you have more force because you're not trying to get your own will. You just, you're standing up for what is true and what is right. And, and you just trust all the outcomes to God. And so you can stand boldly. Look at how Christ stood up to the Pharisees and spoke to the religious leaders of that time and said, no, I've got to look up again if he said it or John the Baptist. But John the Baptist stood in that same way. No, you're a brood of vipers. You know, and Jesus said, you're whitewashed tombs. You, you clean the outside so you look all like bleached, like bleaching the outside of these rocks, you know. Like in Greece, all these buildings are, are bright white and the sun shines on them. He's like, but inside your tombs, rotting dead bodies inside, right? You're, you're not... Bring the inside to God, that God may clean the inside and the outside, right? Not this, oh, look like you're religious so that people can think you're religious and, you know, whatever. God is so good. I encourage you not to doubt the goodness of God. Ask God to help you know his goodness because the devil tried from the beginning to tempt Adam and Eve that God was not being good and God was withholding something when really they were in paradise. They had it all. God help us. 
What avail the most sublime intelligence and divine revelations if we love not the will of God? It was through these, <laughs> there we go, that Lucifer perished. The work of the divine action which God revealed to him in the mystery of the incarnation excited only his envy. Once he saw this, you know, the incarnation, like even the, the maybe the creation of Adam and Eve in the image and likeness of God. I don't know what he foresaw, but he tried to take it from them, and he did. He, he seduced them to choosing something less than. Anyway, a simple soul, on the contrary, enlightened by faith alone, never wearies admiring, praising, and loving the order of God, recognizing it not only in holy things, but even amid the greatest confusion and disorder of events. Right? Maybe those people coming at you in the law courts or wherever they're coming at you will come to know Christ by your, twin, twin, your true tranquility and peace of mind and, and your strength of character to stand up for what is good um, and yet entrust all outcomes to God. You know, like if you watch all those movies where it looks like they're not winning, the good guy's not winning, not winning, not winning in the end, the good guy does win. Like, spoiler alert. <laughs> the enemy is conquered in the end. Read the book of Revelations. God is above all time. God knows this is happening. All right. And so, Jesus said that to me one time in a vision. I had this amazing vision, this strange vision. He's just walking like a schoolboy. <laughs> you know, like a... Like a kid with a stick with the lunch in a bag. You know, like, don't worry, Cheryl. I got this. I already conquered on the cross. I did this. Victory is already ours. It's already mine. It's yours because I'm in you. So don't be worried. Be like a little child with me. It was such a strange vision that I knew it wasn't my own imagination that would come up with something like that because I didn't have a reference for that. It's just how God speaks to your heart when you yield your heart. I usually get things, you know, in my ears. I don't see things. So that was, that was, um, I knew a guy once, right? That I was doing a meditation with Christ and I could hear Christ and I knew I have this knowing that he's present. And then later on, that person told his father in front of me, like, oh, I saw Christ just now. And I'm like, that's because... He was with me in my meditation and they thought I was just being full of it, you know, my own self-aggrandizement or something because they didn't know me that well. I was like, no, no, God revealed it to me in my heart in that moment. It was because, because he had told me to go into um, my meditation at that time because I was doing an hour meditation and I was on, anyway, I won't say more, but um, so some people are more visual and some people are more auditory and some people you know, get a knowing and God will speak to you through, you know, billboards and verses and regular things like he, like when my heart was just yielded to God and he was speaking to me through, through the roller skating, couples dancing, because I was asking God, can we interrupt this meditation to do this, you know, because I didn't want to interrupt my time with God, but I didn't want to be discourteous to this person asking, right? And so, God just combined it. Like, that's how cool God is. Anyway. God, I pray that you protect this teaching from eyes that would not understand unless you're calling them to understand. I pray, God. I, I entrust it to you. I entrust anything I upload to you, to you, Lord. Anything and everything. That you'll get it in the right hands and you'll change the hearts of those that are that are looking at any of this for the wrong reasons, God. I pray we pray for our enemies. Love them, Lord. Love them, God. Show them yourself. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bring them to salvation. Not only in holy things, but even amid the greatest confusion and disorder of events, a simple soul is more enlightened with a ray of pure faith than was Lucifer by his sublime revelations. Right? He had sublime revelations because he was an, uh, an angel before. A high, I don't know if you would call him an archangel, I can't remember, but he fell because of he wanted to be God, he insisted to be God. And we insist to be God when we don't forgive, you know, when we hold on to grudges. 
Because we're saying we know better than God. God says, give that debt to me and, and I will deal with that person. And so we don't have to hold any grudges against ourselves or anyone. Give the debts you have to God. Psalm 51 yourself, right? God, ask God to Psalm 51 you. That's cleanse, cleanse my heart, O oh God. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. The science of a soul faithful to her obligations, you know, the obligations we do have in this life, not the made up ones we have, you know, because the world keeps telling us to stay busy, but our true obligations, like a, like a father. I just did a re- relationship course for hours and hours and hours on like this past Saturday from like nine something in the morning till 2.30 or so. And this man was speaking and I told him, thank you so much. He spoke and said, a man's job is to protect and provide for his wife and protect her soul and cherish her soul and cover her in prayer. And I had a man pray for me that way before. And it was, I've had a few now. It was just astounding because I never grew up with that knowing. With that, I didn't grow up with that example. I mean, my dad would pray sometimes before a meal maybe. But this was like like a warrior man praying for his wife and his children. Like I cover them in prayer. I yield my will to the divine love. And I'm not, this guy wasn't saying he was perfect. But I was just like, there were so many people. I don't know, hundreds of people in the audience. Most of them couples. And I was just like, you don't know what that did to speak to all of these couples and tell them what a man ought to be doing. Even though it says it all over the Bible, we just don't see it when someone says it explicitly. They say, no, a man's job is to cover his wife in prayer and care for and protect her soul, her soul in this dark world, this enemy-occupied territory that C.S. Lewis talks about in mere Christianity, right? The prince of this world. What, what kind of wife wouldn't want to be like, yes, you know, here, I'll, I'll do, the, I was going to say clean the house, but whatever. It's like, I'll do all my duties, whatever our duties are as the feminine in that house. I'm not, I'm not ascribing all of, all of tradition's roles. I'm saying whatever our roles are that God would will us to do, of course, we want to love and cherish and nurture our own, our own husband and, and we're covered by their prayer and we cover them in prayer as well. It's like a cord of three strands is not easily broken. That's why it says better. It does. It says better is, is it for a man to not be alone. And even in my Blessed Theophylact book, he was talking about, I was reading that passage where Peter's mother-in-law was sick and Jesus healed her. And in the commentary from the 1100s, it says, this indicates to all of us that because Peter was the one they said that, you know, Christ, we built the house, the church on the rock of Christ. But Peter's name is rock as well. So in a way, he represents the church. And I won't get into all the debates about that. But he says, um, marriage does not take away from virtue. Oh, that's what he was saying. Because some people have misunderstood that. But Peter himself was married. So I don't understand why. Um, anyway, but I've, I've loved my time being single this past, I won't say how many years, lots. Oh, go, go. Yeah, I don't care at all. I don't ever worry about me. I was like, wait, don't turn around because of me. It just adds color to the video. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll, it's facing me. So I'll do it over this way. I don't want to put you on any video. Huh? Yeah, no, I always ask. (laughs) I'm just reading a book from the 1700s. Oh, I didn't know you had to go around me. I forget. Of course, of course. I'm glad you got some extra writing in. (laughs) I usually go to the top. Oh, shoot. That's always when I'm trying to be kind to someone. I'm just, anyway.
All right. Um, I saw when they came over here, they had this disappointed look. I'm like, don't look at me disappointedly. I can always move. This is, we're, we're flexible here. This is not my mountain. Hi. Okay. Um, so humble and gentle. With all, it's, okay. The science of a soul, faithful to her obligations, peacefully submissive to the secret inspirations of grace, humble and gentle with all, is worth more than the profound wisdom which penetrates mysteries. If we would learn to see but the will of God in the pride and cruelty of creatures, we would always meet them with gentleness and respect. Hmm. If we would learn to see but the will of God in the pride and cruelty of creatures, we would always meet them with gentleness and respect. Whatever the consequences of their disorders, they can never mar the divine order. Wow, there's so much in that. If we would learn to see but the will of God in the pride and cruelty of creatures, we would always meet them with gentleness and respect. Whatever the consequences of their disorders, disorders they can never mar the divine order kind of like Jesus with Pontius Pilate but even with Herod he didn't speak I think you know God I mean Herod had just beheaded John the Baptist who was a righteous man so he had no right to do that and so for some reason Jesus was completely silent with Herod but maybe that's the most love and respect he could offer him is to not answer him a word and with Pilate, Pilate, Pilate was asking what is truth. And, you know, so he did answer Pilate some, but not to, de to defend himself. We must only see in creatures the will of God, whose instruments they are. They are all his instruments, no matter how the enemy has been trying to use them. And whose grace they communicate to us when we receive them with meekness and humility. We have not to concern ourselves for their course, but keep steadily on in our own. And thus with gentle firmness, we will triumph over all obstacles. Were they firmly rooted as cedars and irresistible as rocks, right? With faith as small as a mustard seed, we can, we can move a mountain. Look at, there's mountains over there. We can say to this mountain, move. Because it's the will of God. God, you move all mountains. Remove all mountains in our lives, Lord. Give us the faith to trust that you will and that we don't have to worry about any opposition. <sighs> if you knew the opposition I've been facing in the last five years even, then, then you would know that I, that I trust this as much as I can. God will God, God help me. And I'm not trying to use myself as an example. I'm just he, another person. He's, he's purifying. Um, what can resist the force of a meek, humble, faithful soul? If we would vanquish all our adversaries, we have but to use the weapons God has placed in our hands. He has given them for our defense, and there is nothing to be feared in using them. We must not be cowardly, but generous, as become souls chosen to do God's work. God's workings are sublime and marvelous, and never can human action, warring upon God, resist one who is united to the divine will by the practice of meekness and humility. I see there's another opening right there for them to go by. They didn't have to go around me, these bikers that were here. I didn't, I didn't think I was blocking their path, but it's okay. We all, we worked it out. <laughs> God's workings are sublime and marvelous, and never can human action, warring upon God, resist one who is united to the divine will by the practice of meekness and humility. What was Lucifer, a beautiful spirit, more enlightened than all the others, but a beautiful spirit rebellious against God and his will? Um, uh, 
Um, the mystery of evil is but the continuation of this rebellion in every variety of form. All right, Lucifer, as far as lies in his power, would subvert all that God has done and ordained. Wherever he penetrates, God's work is marred, right? Like I said at the beginning, a world that was good that has gone bad, where enemy occupied territory, but we have, we retain the memory of that which is good, so we don't have any excuse because our soul wants to keep doing what is good, right? Not, not take the good and use it for bad. Anyway, the greater one's learning, science, understanding, the greater his danger if he possesses not that foundation of piety which consists in submission to the will of God. It is a disciplined, submissive heart which unites us to the divine action. Without it, all our goodness is but natural virtue and ordinarily in opposition to the order of God. This all-powerful workman only recognizes the humble as his instruments and condemns the rebellious proud to serve in spite of themselves as the slaves of divine justice. You know, when the thief is caught, it says he shall pay seven times up to his whole household. That's a proverb. Read it and study that. Um, and the thief will use other people to try to come against you. With, but uh, it's not good for them. But they will be used by God. God will, God will work it out. So just do your best and trust God for the rest. When I see a soul whose first object is God and submission to his will, there, however much she may be lacking in other things, I say, here is a soul with great talents for serving God. The Blessed Virgin and St. Joseph appear to have been after this model. Other gifts without this alarm me. I fear to see the action of Lucifer repeated. I am on my guard and entrench myself in my simplicity to resist the dazzling splendor of those gifts of themselves so perishable and fragile. Like that's why it's just like, I don't know if I ought to say I'm a psychologist, even though I went to a Christian graduate school and Christian undergraduate, a Bible college because I wanted to know Christ's way and all of this. And, but they were very rigorous. So they, they're, you know, they were up to the standards and, and beyond of many, many graduate schools. Um, and I did my internship in, in Montreal at McGill, part of McGill Consortium. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Those things can be used for good or used for evil. It's just not to trust in all of these skills that we've acquired in, the, in this world as that, like, you know, the God is our source. Everything else is a resource. It, it's just a source for him to use. Anyway, the next chapter, oh, I almost forgot to fold it down, is chapter um, 11. Turn it up to 11. It's called, we're in holy abandonment, recognition of the divine will. It's called, the soul abandoned to God learns to recognize his will even in the proud who resist him. Uh, I can't wait for that chapter, but I will. I choose to wait. All creatures, whether good or evil, reveal him to her. All right. The last chapter in the subheading on the top, it says, What souls gain by submission to God? I love reading those. Okay. All right. I wish you so much love. I appreciate you being here. Uh, make sure to like and share with like-minded and subscribe so that these come to you because you you never know I, you never know it's just one could have come to you today for a reason and anyway i'm not about controlling that i'm saying it helps it helps this channel grow in any way you can help this channel grow if you have that in your heart to do so then do that don't hold back in that because i know the enemy has sub tried to subvert this in so many different ways but whatever, nevertheless, do not grow weary in doing good, no matter what it looks like on the outside. All right, much love.